Hi, it's Jan Beta, and this here, as you probably know, is a Nintendo Game Boy. This is the original um, model of the Nintendo Game Boy. I actually had one of these back in the day. I think my sister still has it. Um, we basically shared one Game Boy back in the day. We had a lot of games for it. I got this in a box of uh, retro stuff that I won in an eBay auction. So this is like a, a little uh, bonus. Uh, it also comes with a game, Quirk, which is a, is a nice game, actually. Uh, I also have a game that I still have, Gargoyles Quest, which is a pretty nice game too. One of my favorites, actually, but pretty hard. So obviously what I want to do today is take a look inside and then uh, see if it still works. And do a little restoration because it's pretty yellow and crusty. Um, yeah, let's get right into it. These things have some weird tri-wing screws in there, so it's not that trivial to get in there without the proper tool. Luckily, there is some tri-wings there. They are in my iFixit bit set here. There's also hair that got in there. So, um, I still highly recommend getting one of these or a similar set of uh, strange bits. <laughs> So, yeah, this fits perfectly. So let's let's take it all apart. I think this is a this is a premiere for this channel because I'm working on a on a handheld for the first time actually, I think. Except for maybe um, phones and uh, tablets, but uh, this is the first gaming console handheld I'm ever working on on this channel. Hooray! Two screws in the battery compartment there. And what always goes missing on these is the flap for the battery compartment. And I'm a huge fan of the old uh, form factor. It's a bit clunkier than the, the later models. Game Boy Pocket, I think, and Game Boy Color, and everything in between. And Game Boy Advance later on. Actually, the first advance isn't that bad. Well, let's see, I think we can... Yay! Okay. Disconnect the screen. There we go. Yeah, I think this is the actual main board shielding going on here with some copper, actually. Pretty nice. Could have a look at the main board, shall we? So, I need a Phillips screwdriver. Obviously, we also have one in the set here. So, and here's where all the magic happens. This is the CPU, conveniently labeled as DMG CPU B, copyright 1989 by Nintendo in Japan. There's some sharp chips. These are both the same, I think, on there too. Memory, maybe? A little crystal, some capacitors. Pretty neat little design there. This is our little audio board. As there isn't anything broken or anything obvious, I'm just gonna put it back in for now. I am going to take a look at the other part, which is the monitor. Okay, so here's the other half of the Game Boy. <laughs> Should probably clean this a bit and uh, then reassemble. This is the brightness control actually, or the, the contrast rather. There's no, no backlight on this in the standard configuration. Yeah, I think I'm going to give this a, a little cleaning from inside and then put it back together and test it. This is uh, pretty much the same design as in the uh, Nintendo controllers in general. Just some little carbonized plastic, I believe. Then so, of course there have to be more screws so the controller stuff stays in place. So 
even with uh, some heavy gaming. <laughs> this is quite an intelligent design, I guess, with the two boards, one for the screen, one for the uh, main logic there. Uh, the two controller wheels on the left and on the right. It's, it's pretty, pretty nice. And as we know, as history tells us, <laughs> this was a huge success. I think still one of the most successful handheld gaming platforms ever. And again, this is from a time when actually humans were servicing stuff. <laughs> it says here that that's not a screw hole. Don't screw anything in there because the screen is on the other side, on the other side, actually. <laughs> so you would screw the screw through the screen. Okay, I just realized there actually is some battery liquid damage there. Here and here. It's not all that bad. We can probably. Just wash that off. But I've seen much, much worse. <laughs> this is in really decent condition, especially given that it was just a, a, a gimmick, a bonus thing. So I think I'm just going to try some IPA and a cotton swab thing here to wash away some of the corrosion there, oh, which works pretty nicely. Okay, it's just it's just on the surface there. It's not bad. So here's my stash of Varta batteries I removed from Amiga mainboards. No, not really. These are uh, fresh Varta batteries. Let's see if this does anything at all. If I turn it on, should at least there should be uh, a black thing moving on the screen. Okay, no, it doesn't say anything. No dice. Not even the battery. Ah, there we go. Okay, there is some contact problems with the battery. Ah, uh, okay, now. That's what I wanted to see. This is actually working, I guess. Let's see if the game we got with it works. <laughs> and it actually says, Das ist mein Spiel, nicht deins. Which means, this is my game, not yours. <laughs> Well put, previous owner, well put. Okay, let's see. Now it should be the Nintendo logo, which it is. Yay! And the sound works! <laughs> nice! This is so cool. Okay, I got a working Game Boy! Yay! Now to refurbish this a bit. So I'm going to do some work on this. Uh, I don't really want to put batteries in this every time I use it. It has, actually has a little um, power jack here. And it is specified for 6 volts DC at 0.7 watts. So uh, what we are going to do and what actually works is to have this powered by 5 volts DC and we are going to use a USB cable for that. So all we have to do really is to figure out which polarity this uh, barrel plug has and uh, solder a fitting connector onto this USB cable. Let's get it on! So I don't know about you guys but I have a lot of these things which came with um, various power supplies uh, like these multi power supplies that you get from time to time. This is a pretty thin connector, maybe something like this. Um, this one will fit. So you get you get basically get multiple um, adapters for... No, this doesn't fit. Does this fit? multiple adapters for all kinds of, yeah, that's the one, for all kinds of uh, connectors like these uh, or various barrel plugs. 
Um, so you basically have to find the one that's that fits this socket, which in this case is this. I have no idea which size it is, it doesn't say. Yeah. But we're going to figure out the polarity. And I think what I can do, I think this is a switched socket, so if you put in the plug, uh, it is going to switch one of the one of the lines here on and switch the connection to the battery connector off so um, it doesn't charge the batteries because usually you would have um, regular batteries in here and uh, you don't want your your um, power supply to put voltage on the batteries because otherwise they would heat up and uh, in the worst case explode even yeah, you basically don't want power going to the batteries if they are not um, rechargeable batteries. So this is a switch as well as a socket. And uh, yeah, what we are going to do is to determine which one is uh, positive and negative, I think. So we are going to check the negative terminals here, which may be connected to this or the positive ones. One of them should be connected through all the time. And we can just determine the other one. Uh, by being the other one, basically. So the other one is... Uh, so what we're going to do now is to hold this. I'm going to leave the connector in there and just going to check which side this is. Okay, this seems to be the switched side of this one. Okay, so this is our negative terminal. So I'm just holding one probe here. I have this in continuity mode, uh, the multimeter and this appears to be our negative here. So this is our negative. My guess is that it's a center negative, which means the, the center of the barrel connector here is the negative pin. Yep. So I can confirm that the Game Boy connector is center negative. This is just a standard USB cable. I'm just going to cut it and strip the wires. And the good thing about USB is, is that it's color-coded and it's pretty um, consistent. So, the color code, uh, which is pretty obvious, is the red is the positive and the black is the negative 5 volts that are um, USB standard. The white, or in this case uh, yellowish, and the green are uh, the data lines. And this is the shield, basically. I'm just going to mm, cut these, cut these down, and uh, basically leave them unused. And just use these two and solder them on to our connector. <laughs> What I tend to do with these um, heat shrink tubings is to, um, they are a bit large, I heat them up and then I burn my fingers by um, twisting them a bit so that the wires are nicely held in place. So okay, that should do it. So this is our USB cable and it should now power our Game Boy. Let's test it. Excuse the mess here. I have a lot of projects going on, as you probably can tell from the uh, variety of videos I'm releasing at the moment. Um, there's my, my Apple 5 volt USB adapter again. I'm just going to plug this in here. And uh, plugging this part into the Game Boy. Okay, self made power cable. Turning it on. Yep. And sure enough. It absolutely works. Good treat. Yeah, so we have USB power on our game on now, which is great. But I'm definitely going to uh, do some more work on this. Yeah, I can't really play uh, with the camera in the way because I can't really see. Uh, so, yeah, this was a success. So now that I have a uh, more versatile power.
power source for this. Uh, what I want to do is to put in a backlight and I'm also going to do a bivert mod which basically means uh, you invert the picture from the graphics uh, chip that goes to the display and then basically put in a polarization filter that inverts it again and what that does is to um, make the contrast better because the um, the uh, liquid crystal display that is pretty old school and in here is has a pretty low contrast and if you light it from the back um, you get a pretty low contrast picture in general so the bivert mod is the way to um, counter that so okay let, we have to open this up again of course to get to the display and I have to find my backlight and bivert kit so here's the um, backlight kit I got uh, it's pretty it's a random one I found on eBay from a UK seller and I just bought it uh, because it was the cheapest basically <laughs> um, there are probably better uh, ways and I recommend you do your own research on that uh, I also bought a new glass uh, thing here because this is originally plastic and uh, yeah, the glass one doesn't scratch, the plastic one is already quite scratchy and I'm going to do some work on the case too, so I thought why not go all the way. This is basically a hex inverter chip and um, these circuit boards are just little uh, adapters so you can solder to the outputs easier, so you can um, put your wires in here. and. Yeah, that's a polarization filter, that's a backlight, and that's a little resistor to put in line with the backlight so it doesn't shine too bright and the LED doesn't burn. So, okay, let's get into it. Let's open up the gamer again and then install the backlight first, I guess. While I have the case off, I am going to clean it and... I think I want to retro it too. So here we are. This is our uh, working area, basically. We want to lever out the screen here. We have to remove these two screws, I guess, because they are holding the flat flex cable down smaller Phillips screwdriver. This is the PH00 size, so this should fit. Yep. These are small screws. And this is not... Yeah, you have to be pretty careful with this because this is a ribbon cable and they break pretty easily. So, okay, so now this should just lift out here. There's another ribbon cable under here. So here's another. This is uh, even more uh, difficult to handle ribbon cable. Um, what we have to do in order to place the backlight here is to peel off the whole, the silver stuff on the screen. Uh, yeah, so we have to get in there with a knife and peel it off and hopefully get it off in one piece without breaking the ribbon cable. That's pretty delicate. Uh, so, okay, let's get it on. You want to get all the layers one go ideally. No, it's separated, so you don't want that of course. So it probably helps if you heat it up a bit. You don't want to scratch the display. Okay, so this is not working as well as I thought. That's pretty stubborn. 
Okay, so this is the stuff nobody ever shows in the tutorials. <laughs> this is pretty hard to get off. Uh, and you have to take care to not damage the ribbon beneath there. Uh, so. And of course you don't want any glue residue there. Okay, so I think I have it. Okay, so there's one little piece that I need to remove. And I'm probably going to wash this with some IPA. Yeah, I'm just going to use some isopropyl alcohol. But now you have a translucent uh, thing over here. Look at this. This is where the picture, the actual picture, is displayed. So, and of course, you want to clean this pretty thoroughly just using a microfiber uh, cloth here so that all the residue, the glue residue, is gone. And I can see the actual pixels in there, that's nice. <laughs> so, the backlight. Should go in there with the cables to the bottom side here. So this should go in here like so between the yeah, like so basically. So that's our backlight installed, I guess. <laughs> and um, we are getting power from this from the points on this little capacitor here. Basically the one, the side with the stripe is the negative one, which is the black one, and the other side is the positive one. So we have to solder our connections there. And we're probably good to go. So I think I'm still going to cut a bit of this um, bezel here to have a nice point of exit for the cable. So can cut some here. Can cut a little piece of this bezel out. So the cables can go in there. So now for soldering on the wires, one goes here, which is the negative, the black one, and the red one goes on this side here. So now I want to have my little capacitor on my positive lead here. So I'm going to clip this a bit. And I'm also going to add some heat shrink. So, like so. Goes here. And then we have to put some heat shrink tube tubing on. So this is now, this is our backlight mod in place. Uh, should work. Should we test it? I guess so. So okay, fingers crossed this doesn't blow up right away. Like power. Let's power this on. Yep. Okay, so the backlight works. Uh, you of course have to put the filter in there to see anything at all. To polarize the light. And you can change the polarity of the light. <laughs> uh, by changing the orientation of the polarization filter. So here we are. This is what we get. So okay. This backlight seems to work, which is great. Uh, let's get into the Bivert mod. Just cleaning my hands with some IPA. Uh, we have to insert the polarization filter film after removing protective film from it. So there we are. And you want this adhesive, you want this to look 
like this, like blue, blue. <laughs> so we want to have don't, we want to have this look blue and not like this, like yellow red. So the blue direction is the right direction if you're doing the byword mod. I want to stick this onto our backlight. Okay, so this isn't cut to shape very nicely at all. Okay, so here we are. So now the screen is inverted, as you can see. We have to invert it back. So now we need to insert a little hex inverted chip, which in this case is a 74HCO4. Can also use a 74HC4049 for this, which is wired slightly differently. Um, so we have these little adapters here. So I'm adding some flux here for easier flow. <laughs> and I'm adding solder to one side of the circuit board or to one. Let's start with one pin. So we can affix our chip there. So there we are. One pin is tinned. Then I am placing my IC. Maybe like so. Can you see? No, you can't. No, you can. And then I'm heating up the solder and placing it so that it is, yeah, so like so. And then we're soldering on the rest of the pins. Most of the time, times it's enough if you just put some solder on there. So these are pretty easy to solder because they're pretty large. Just have to make sure that there are no bridges or anything. So okay, so this should be on there. Um, that's a little little indentation. Yeah, now you can see it. A uh, little round indentation. That is the um, pin one. The orientation is basically. Um, like this. There's a little notch on the soda mask here on the um, silk screen and that's where pin 1 goes. So we have the numbers of the pins on our little through hole holes here and uh, the back side of the board basically is for smaller chips. So now the first thing we have to do is to cut or to remove uh, the sixth and the seventh pin on this connector. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So these we have to um, lift them up from the board basically. So we are going to use some solder wick to remove the solder that's on there. So I'm using some wick, removing some solder there. to heat it and lift it carefully. <laughs> Can cut the traces there, of course. Okay, I think I got one off. So I lifted my traces here nicely. <laughs> but in this case it's, it's okay, because we want to break the connections there. Okay, and here's my two pins lifted up from the board there. So in the end, I want my little chip sitting here, like so. Um, so I need to wire from a couple of points here to here, so I need some, some little wires here. So this is pretty difficult to describe. I'm just going to link in, in the description below, some uh, pictures of where to connect these wires, so you can uh, copy that. 
Um, two of them go to the little pins that we just moved out of the way. So I'm just going to do it and then show you the results. Okay, so here's how this looks now. <laughs> I'm not really sure if this is going to work, but we're going to try. Anyway, so I'm going to connect this back up. And the um, picture should be inverted if I turn this back on. Let's see. Switching on. Okay, and it is inverted. We have some pixels going wide there, but it does work. Yep, and it does work. So I consider this a success, although I have some dead pixels here. I'm going to take care of that later, I guess. Okay, here we are in darkness, let's see. Darkness, this looks pretty bright. Yeah, this looks pretty good. <laughs> nice. Okay, so the backlight mod and the bivert mod seem to be a success. Uh, I am going to fix this little circuit board or rather adapter board uh, in this corner here. Hopefully, it uh, is going to be flat enough to fit in the case later, but I think so. I think I'm just going to um, wrap some electrical tape around it, so I can be sure it doesn't short out uh, with any connections beneath it. Okay, there we go. Let's clean up the case, and I might want to retrobrite it, but I want to clean it up first. So, f for getting these um, battery terminals out there, there's a little clip that you have to push in and then you can um, just drag it out with a pair of pliers or something similar. There we go. So, and this, this is a bit corroded, so I can now clean this up pretty nicely. So, same with the tabs on the bottom side here. Yep, there we go. Okay, this is our battery terminals. We're going to clean this up because there, were, there is some corrosion. You can see the green stuff on here. It's pretty convenient that these are all the same screws. This is for shielding, I suppose. So, so we are going to take these parts, all of them, and soak them in some soapy water. I think I'm also going to put it in the screen because then I have a spare. Doesn't hurt. Okay, basically you're going to put soapy water in this and let it soak and then uh, go about cleaning it with a toothbrush. So here's what it looks like after cleaning and you can clearly see that the front side of it is pretty much pretty yellow. Um, back side is pretty much the color that this had originally except for on the corners here. Um, so what I want to do is to slightly retrobrite this. Um, I have cleaned this up. The, I think we can leave the battery compartment as is because it's really looks pretty much good as new. 
uh, except for some dirt that I overlooked there. So what I'm going to do is to use some peroxide on this and uh, wrap it into some cling wrap and then retrobrite it for a couple of hours. Let's see how this turned out and I'm going to do the same with this part here. And I am removing the old adhesive that's on here. The screen is basically, or the screen, the screen cover, this part here is basically just glued on. So that's why these um, fall off so often, because the glue gets uh, brittle. So I am going to do this slightly differently this time. I'm still going to use this stuff, which is, uh, yeah, basically I use this all the time on computer cases that are yellowed. This is um, hydrogen peroxide 12% solution as a cream. And this particular one uh, worked very well for me in the past. Uh, don't know if there's others that work similarly. Uh, I can recommend this stuff. This is what's in here by the way. This is the ingredients. Uh, so maybe you get something that has similar ingredients. Um, there are different additives because this is meant to be used on human hair, of course, uh, not on uh, decades old plastic. So uh, this works for me. So I'm going to use some cling wrap. This is normal household stuff. I'm going to wear some uh, gloves here so because the peroxide can be pretty aggressive and can uh, harm your skin. It's like little little burns. It's not nothing serious usually, but uh, it's better to to be safe. <laughs> and it will bleach your hair and, and your clothes. So um, be careful with this stuff. Um, so what I usually do is to use like a paintbrush and put some hydrogen peroxide cream. On the pieces I want to retrobrite, and then just spread it around and into all the little cavities that it has to be spread into with my brush. And then I put some cling wrap around it basically. So the cling wrap is there to prevent this uh, cream from drying out because um, you are going to use this on there for some hours, at the very least. Um, usually you would put this into the sun, which, which works best. You can uh, also use um, UV light. I used a grow light that doesn't even have much UV in the past and it worked. Um, I am going to try something else today. I have bought a UV light that I am going to try with this. So I used this box before. It basically has some uh, bubble wrap that has a reflective uh, like aluminum foil on it. Uh, so we can use this as a reflector four pieces, so I'm just going to put them in there. Okay, so here's how I set this up now. Um, got my my desk lamp there and two boxes and my uh, reflective box with the Game Boy in it, or the Game Boy case. And I'm going to use uh, this cheapo uh, energy saver light, which is supposedly a uh, black light, which has a high UV percentage doesn't even say anything on the packaging so it's it's pretty much it's a very cheap uh, light that I bought that should fit into a normal lamp there and it looks pretty funky <laughs> like black light okay so this should uh, be my setup now let's see how it does so this is how it looks like it's pretty purple <laughs> I hope there's a high UV percentage in there and it works. Um, yeah, I'm going to basically leave this in there and uh, massage the cream around every half an hour or so and 
see how it does after a couple of hours. So half an hour has passed and I am going to uh, do my routine of uh, changing the position of the pieces and massaging around the uh, peroxide cream so I don't get any streaking or anything like that, hopefully. Then I'm going to re-engage the light and come back in another half an hour and uh, yeah, repeat <laughs> until further notice. I had my Game Boy case in here with my uh, with the uh, black light uh, overnight and it still is yellowed so the light that I chose probably won't uh, do much at least not very quickly uh, so I decided to try to go back to um, my grow light that I uh, used before in previous videos um, I don't know why but it seems to work at least a little bit better for um, stuff like this so I'm just going to use it for this too and just it fits perfectly on top of this box I basically built this box to um, hold the grow light on top so that's what I'm going to do let's wait for another couple of hours I guess <laughs> Okay, so the grow light works way better. Um, this is after half an hour already. So I'm going to give it another half an hour. And as you can see, this is the original color. This is the now acquired color. So this works pretty quickly. I think it's mostly because the um, grow light is emitting a lot of heat because it's a lot brighter. And I think... Uh, that's probably the main reason this works so well. Heat just plays an important role in the process, I guess. So uh, let's give it another half an hour and then rinse it and reassemble the, the Game Boy. Okay, so uh, this turned out absolutely amazing. Looks as good as new. And this even, which I thought would be the original color, is a bit... Uh, yellowed compared to the rest of the case, so I might go back and retrobrine this a bit. At a later point it's not that important to me now. Um, I, I want to reassemble this now and um, see how it looks with the new screen, uh, or with the new backlight, it's not a new screen at all. Uh, so let's do that, let's reassemble it and, and have a look. So I think I have to cut this to make room for my little knot here. Yeah, that's better. Okay, let's test this before we put on the lid there. So this actually looks quite good. It looks way better than the original screen, but it's really hard to show on camera. Okay, now for the this one, this particular glass screen has um, adhesive, self, it has adhesive tape on the back here. 
So I think we're just going to use that. Otherwise you would uh, use some household glue, I guess. This has some nice adhesive on it, so we can just use that. Yeah, this turned out pretty nicely, I guess. So, there is several problems with this. Um, I basically screwed up the mod a bit. Um, as you can see, the cable here works just fine. And the screen looks good. But, there are... Um, like, there are dead pixels in the top row here. And I have this little cloud here that I mentioned before. Um, it is not perfect. And this is because I damaged the ribbon cable, probably. Uh, there's the ribbon cable for the vertical lines is below the screen here. And the ribbon cable for the horizontal lines is the one that is on the side here that you have to really carefully uh, move while inserting the backlight there. And that's where I where I messed it up basically. So I, I um, broke loose some contacts there on top. Uh, otherwise this mod is nice looking. I think the little cloud there is because I used um, isopropanol. Can turn off the light, maybe it's visible a bit better. Um, I highly recommend doing this mod, just don't screw it up like I did. Uh, anyway, uh, this I'm going to try to fix this probably in another video. Um, this one is already long enough, and I think it's not easy to reach um, this ribbon cable. This one is pretty easy, and you can go on there with the soldering iron carefully wiggle around and um, reattach the solder joints to the screen. But it's not that easy on this one because it's really hard to reach in there with the um, soldering iron. So I am not going to try that now, but in a different video sometime. So I hope you enjoyed this anyway. It wasn't the perfect mod. I also think there are, you can see the LEDs, like four LEDs on the bottom here. There are mods uh, on at kits that are better. I'm probably going to do a similar thing with another Game Boy. I'm going to try to fix this and maybe make a video about that if I succeed. Um, yeah, I think there's still some things to learn from this video, hopefully. Uh, yeah, so much for now. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little uh, Game Boy refurb uh, slash mod video. Um, there is going to be more about Game Boys and consoles in general, I think, in the near future. Uh, yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please consider checking out my Patreon page. I'm going to link that in the corner there. There's going to be some behind the scenes stuff and uh, some extras and some early bird videos and stuff like that on there. So thanks for watching. I'm Jan Vita. Hope to see you again on this channel sometime. Goodbye. Thanks. <laughs>